Guys, recently I was at Tower Bridge in London. I took a photo, it was there, not optimal time for photography, but I did see something in the imagery. There was just a slight beam of light hitting the top half of the, the towers either side, and I thought to myself, there's something that can be done with this in post-production. So in this video, what I wanna do is take you through this image and show you how I created this. Now this is gonna be done in three parts. Hopefully I can share some tips and tricks along the way. We're gonna do a sky replacement, that's part one. That's what's coming up in this video. In the second part, we'll look at how I've done the water reflections because in my opinion, what we were dealing with initially was just muddy, dirty River Thames water. I wanted to create something much more aesthetically pleasing. And then in the third one, we're just going to finishing off the image. I'm using Luminar Flex, which is one of my favorite plugins for Photoshop, just to really enhance and bring out all that lovely detail and the kind of contrast and dramatize the image in the way that I was wanting to. So guys, let's dive straight in and see how I got to that end result. So first of all, what I was doing was just going through the images that I took and selecting the one that really stood out to me. Um, I wanted one with a fair bit of sky around it and uh, all the images were handheld, so nothing off a tripod. I reset everything in Lightroom and from there I've just got the ability to customize everything exactly as I want it. So I've taken away things like um, I've added chromatic aberration correction, things like that. And I just want to get the image to a place where I'm happy with it and I can bring it into Photoshop, just as a good starting point. So at this point, I just want to make sure I've got all the details in my blacks, whites, highlights and shadows. The camera profile that I've selected is just camera standard at this point. Um, sure, in Lightroom, you can put different profiles on, but I like to I like to go with camera standard um, and add my uh, creative flair later. Here I'm just straightening up the image. Uh, no one wants to see the tower bridge looking like it's falling over, so I've just used it, used the guided um, transform tool there to make sure everything's nice and straight. Now I am cropping away some of the sides of the picture, but it doesn't worry me in this instance. I'm using a lovely D850 sensor, so I've got heaps of megapixels to play with. Um, I'm just adjusting the contrast ever so slightly. This looks really extreme at the moment, but what I want is a dramatic image. And at this point, I'm just going to actually correct some of those areas where I've really darkened it down. I don't want to lose that, that uh, detail in all the shadows. So I'm actually going to have the contrast plus detail in the shadow. And I'm just doing that with local adjustments. Um, where I can, I'll do, I'll either use the radial filter like I'm doing here to darken that building in the background, or I'll use um, um, a linear gradient um, that I can uh, just quickly pull over the water, which I did to brighten that up. I'm using the luminance mask here so that I can particularly hone in just on the shadows if I want to, or in this case, over the building, just over the highlights, and I'll do that across the buildings in the background there too, because I just felt they're just a little bit too bright, and I really want the main focus to be the bridge itself and not the buildings behind. I just want them to just sort of fall off into the distance, and as you'll know, something that's highlighted will scream much louder than something that's in shadow. Now here what I'm doing is actually just playing with the uh, the color balance um, because what I want to do is actually create um, an, an like nice uh, orange glow to the left hand side and blue to the right hand side. That's kind of the direction I wanted to take this image because what I want to do is actually have a brighter left hand side to the image, um, almost where the sun is coming through because we can see it hitting the towers and what we want to do is actually emulate the sky that reflects that. So having a brighter sky on the left-hand side, darker on the right-hand side, and that will look like the sun's coming from that direction. The sky that we have natively in this file, it was just very meh. It's a boring, boring sky. So I'm going to replace this sky at some point, but I just wanted to kind of get a feel for where this image was actually going. So that 
copy that layer that I've brought into Photoshop. That is just a guide really with that um, orangey on the left, blue on the right hand side. So here what I've done is actually just increased the shadows on this layer. Um, and I've done that in ACR, so Adobe Camera Raw. So I've still got all the detail of the original raw file and I've just really boosted up the blacks and the shadows. Um, but obviously as an overall image, that isn't ideal, but I've created a mask that I've applied over that using apply image. And that way I can actually just talk straight into the shadows. And now in this one, I'm gonna bring down the highlights and probably even just bring in just a little bit more texture into those highlights as well, because that's gonna be our main focus in this image when it's done is those highlights on the top of the towers. And I really don't wanna be losing any detail there. So at the moment you can see it looks pretty flat, um, but I'm not too concerned about that. My main concern at this point is just making sure I've got that full dynamic range to play with. I've, I've got all the detail in the in the highlights, all the detail in the shadows, and then the tweaking and stylizing of the imagery, that's gonna come later. So at the moment, I'm just working with my mask here, just so that I'm dialing straight in specifically to those highlights only. As I'm pointing out with the text there, it's, it's, just, um, it's just looking a little flat, but like I say, I am really not concerned at this point. I've now hidden that layer that was showing um, the, the details being brought back in the shadows. And now I'm literally just painting it back in where I wanna make sure that I've got the shadow details. You can see it coming back in underneath the top of the bridge there and the highlights as well, so that they're not blowing out. At this point, I just wanna move around the image and just check that it's all looking pretty good, which it is, I'm pretty happy with that. So now I've got myself what I call a base layer. And from there, I'm gonna start building up the actual look of the image and um, enhancing it from here. So I really wanna make sure that the architecture pops. So at this point, I've added some texture, I've added some clarity. And again, I'm just speaking into these highlight areas and I just really wanna make sure that those towers themselves are quite nice and nice and crunchy. As you, um, as you play around a little bit with those exposure levels and curves and things like this, sometimes you can start um, bringing in too much in the way of saturation. Um, so I actually put that last layer into luminosity blend mode, just so it's got the detail, but without affecting the color. Now at this point, my thoughts were the actual image itself is very cool, but what I want to do is actually have the ability to bring in a highlighted area that is actually warm. So you see how I've just changed that to color mode um, by using um, an apply image mask again, I'm just applying that nice warm color purely to those, uh, to the highlighted parts of the towers. Now comes for the absolutely mind numbingly boring job of actually masking out uh, around the building. Uh, around the tower itself. Now this was honestly such an absolute monotonous task. So I just cranked up the tunes, had those blasting and worked my way around with the pen tool. Um, now in this case, I chose to use the pen tool after having a little play around with trying to use Photoshop's inbuilt selection tools like the magic wand, um, magnetic lasso, things like this just to try and get a result quickly. Um, I've even used channels, but because we have a lot of blue in the bridge as well as the sky, it was very hard to select them separately. So finally, I have a selection. Um, by having it as a pen selection, if I missed anything, I can then um, always adjust it. So now I'm gonna choose myself a sky that actually fits nicely with that image. So I'm into my sky library here and the image that I quite like um, just has, has the sun coming through on the right here, but I can always flip that so it's over on the other side. Um, it's quite a gray and dark sky. Like I like the broodiness, but what I'm wanting to actually achieve is 
a blue and orange sky, not such a gray sky. And so by bringing it in as an editable layer, um, what I can do is actually jump straight back into Adobe Camera Raw again and make adjustments to the highlights. So I'm doing a localized adjustment here and just bringing down those highlights there, making them nice and orange and saturated. And then I'm actually going to also address the other part of the sky, the gray part with a separate adjustment. Um, and what I'm gonna do there is actually change the color temperature to blue. Well, you can see I'm actually changing the overall color temperature there, but um, I'm actually going to put over this local adjustment layer here and stretch that out. And the brilliant thing with that is it's giving me the ability to actually dial straight into that little bit of cloud interest there on the left hand side and just bring out some more detail there so it's a little more punchy um, just by bringing up the clarity things like that uh, so now we have our sky nicely in place so i'm quite pleased with that but currently the foreground and the background do not match in terms of color balance or anything like that so that's something that we're going to have to address So at this point, what I want to do is, I quite like the orange on the tower bridge itself. Uh, that matches quite nicely with the orange of the clouds on the left-hand side. Um, so I'm just creating a mask just where I can paint that in. I'm being very rough and ready at the moment, but I'm gonna refine that mask as I go. Um, I like to paint pretty heavy-handedly to start with. Um, just to make sure that the look is headed in, in the right direction. Uh, if you're working with a really low flow, really low opacity, um, and you get to the end and it doesn't look right, um, it's taken you a long time to realize that it wasn't quite right. Uh, the next step in terms of color balance um, is I've actually created a gradient map here, and I'm stealing colors directly from the sky. So on the far end of the of the scale I've got the blues from the, the blues in the sky and on the other end we've got the oranges from the orange part of the sky and now by just adapting that gradient map um, so that I feel that we can then look at blending that in so whether that's blending it in using just normal mode color mode or even soft light which is what I'm doing at the moment we can start to match the colors that are in the sky with tower bridge itself in the end, I've created a group where I've actually done a little bit of both. I've done a little bit of a color um, version, so the gradient map just in uh, color mode, color blend mode, and also one in normal mode. And then I'm just blending them in just ever so softly. So we can see it now, our original or our direction. I was flicking between the direction I wanted to head in and what we're working on at the moment. Now, as I was flicking between the two, I noticed that I actually quite liked um, some of the elements of that original edit that were just a little darker on the bridge there because I, I didn't really want our eye to go to the uh, the beams that come off from the tower. They're quite bright and catch your eye quite a lot, quite considerably, as does this building in the background here just behind the tower. So I'm just going to create myself a quick mask going around the bridge here just so that I can speak in directly to that building behind the bridge. I've lowered the curves so that it's darkened that off and now I'm just going to work on that mask and just feather that in. Just paint in those edges so it's nice and soft, nice and subtle and if we see our before and after we can actually see that we've darkened down that building and our eye stays nicely with the bridge. So now one other thing I've decided to do was just because I felt that the the blue area of the sky I brought in was just a little plain. I've just painted back in by masking out that blue some of the original sky um, just for a purpose of texture. Now I'm bringing in the texture but it's the wrong color so now I've done an overlay layer in color mode and I've just picked some blue from that sky and I'm just painting that over and now we'll just drop the curve so it's not quite as bright and so I'm darkening down that area so it's got the texture but it's not screaming look at me look at me it's just nice and subtle there um, but yeah we've we've added the texture and I like the fact that the angle comes from the top left of the image down towards the bridge as well it's just helping lead your eye in from that top left hand corner which is quite nice 
Now I'm actually just painting on another layer, um, just purely painting orange. Um, with no regard to um, blend modes as such, I'm literally just sampling colors from from the uh, from the actual canvas itself, and then with a really soft brush and a really, really low opacity, just dabbing in, dabbing in, nice big soft brush, um, and that's helping to give a really nice glow to that orange area in the sky. And the next thing I'm, I'm doing is actually now just readdressing um, the, the part that uh, I don't know what it's called. What are those bits, those kind of cantilever bits that come away from the bridge? I don't know. I'm not an engineer. Um, I was darkening those down and I just felt that we needed to extend that orange on the left hand side from the sky and just bring that in behind the bridge just a little bit. And the final little touches that we're doing here is just adding a little bit of fog for atmosphere. Now I'm going to dial this back. I'm Again, working pretty heavy handed with that just so I can see what look I'm doing, getting and then I'll just drop the opacity. And so now guys, you can see where we've come from and where we've got to and all we've really done is just a sky replacement and then color matched the bridge with that sky and I'm pretty happy with where it is but I really feel that we've got um, much further that we can go with this image. So the next step is we're going to replace the water. So we get a beautiful reflection and we're going to try and do that in as realistic a way as we possibly can in Photoshop. So thanks very much guys. I will catch you for part two. Join me there now. Cheers.